So I have three topics today. There's Pat Cipollone, who's the uh, White House attorney who's going to be testifying before the January 6th committee. Now, he's already done a little bit. Then there's going to be Harry and his money-making schemes. How are those coming along? And then finally, as I look over here to the end, oh, England without Boris. Will it ever be the same? We'll talk about that. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please like the video. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Yeah, so, you know, finally, this guy, Pat Cipollone, you know, he had been in and talked to the committee uh, before, um, I guess somewhat less formally, but now it's going to be videotaped, it's going to be transcribed. I don't think we'll see the videotapes, probably we'll see the transcripts, but this is going to be life-changing. And it's amazing that it took a 25-year-old young woman to bring these this man out of his um, uh, comfort zone uh, to tell, tell, hopefully, what he knows. Then, Harry... You know, okay, is the money making working? Let's face it, if he doesn't get the money going, then the, anything else can't happen. And I hear that uh, he's no longer uh, uh, taking any support from Charles. So we'll do a little reading on that. And then finally, England without Boris. Good grief. If the United States only had that same option to vote someone out for no confidence, uh, Boris has been in there a little over two years, not quite three, I think, and finally you get to change him and hopefully get somebody better. And uh, kudos for the uh, ministers who walked out and the, and the other folks with them uh, to press this into happening. If only our United States senators and congressmen had the same backbone. So we'll talk about all that stuff. So here we go. We've got a few things to talk about. Uh, we're going to go right off the bat with Pat Cipollone. Pat Cipollone. You know, he had to be so disgusted with everything that was going on um, in that White House. He seems uh, like a decent fella. Um, he's Republican. And um, why won't these people come out and tell what they know? There's some misguided allegiance to some sort of process of government. Um, but, you know, there's a time when the thing that protects you, uh, you have to just cast it off and uh, take the blows and do what's the right thing. But first we do anything, we're going to do what's the right thing and have a little moment of meditation. Okay. Perfect. So, Pat Cipollone, what is going to come from that? So, just like usual, I'm not going to ask a specific question. If you ask me questions, then I'll ask those questions. But uh, I'll just um, do a you know an energy read on Pat Cipollone and see hopefully if this tells us uh, a little bit. Pat Cipollone, a little bit about what we need to know uh, for him. So, Pat Cipollone, what can the cards tell us about him? Six cards only. Dyadic Cross. It's four, five, and six. So, Pat Cipollone, tell our cards, do your stuff. Give us some insight into this guy. I mean, it took a young woman to bring him out of the closet. Uh, the signifier card for Pat Cipollone, then, is this uh, the moon card. How appropriate. I love it when it starts out like this. So the signifier card, Pat Cipollone, White House attorney who knows everything. The moon card. And what is the moon card? Secrets being revealed. Nice. What's the challenge to this? Pat Cipollone. Ah, the hanged man. You know, the, this is uh, so far two major arcana. And so the hanged man is, you know, uh, looking at a thing from another perspective. 
All right. So perhaps his perspective has been on protecting the office of the presidency, not necessarily Trump, I believe. I don't think that's the case. I think the office of the presidency. But now, hopefully, the challenge to all these secrets is looking at things from another perspective uh, where we're learning or maybe feeling like the truth is, is a little more important. The um, base of this reading, then, is the Ten of Coins. Ten of Coins is fantastic. Uh, coins are value, worth. Ten of Coins is familial, a generational a value. And this is what's underlying this whole reading. What we need here is some generational um, material to build on, to strengthen our democracy. The past of this reading for Pat Cipollone, with this page of wands, so this is... Um, in the past, so the ones are actions, uh, plans, forward movements, and the page is a very weak uh, harbinger of that message. But he does, he is the messenger, and he does bring that forward. So he's got some information in the past here that's going to be brought forward. Skyless reading for Pat Cipollone, the Nine of Wands. You know, the Nine of Wands is typically feeling very embattled. And it's very telling here that this is a woman carrying this wand ahead of these other eight wands in the back. This embattled woman, who is that? Is that our democracy? Is that America? Is that Liz Cheney? Um, but the sky of this is that this embattled person has to keep on going. And look at the, the sturdy, uh, non-disturbed face this person has. I've overcome. I've passed up these issues. I've got my plan. I'm going to keep on going. It seems like it's Liz Cheney to me. And then the final outcome, Pat Cipollone, is the tower card. So destruction, uh, something that has to be recovered from. Lots of major arcana cards here, and this seems appropriate. So we start out with Pat for the moon card, Secret Being Revealed. And it's a challenge by what? Looking at things from another perspective, the hanged man. Underpinned by this generational uh, value represented uh, in this Ten of Coins. Uh, in the past of this is this weak page of a messenger. And maybe this is speaking to Pat. He didn't want to be a messenger, and probably they're going to have to pry those messages out of him. In the sky, though, we have Liz Cheney with that plan in her hand, and she's not going to be deterred. She looks very uh, uh, determined to get this thing done. And then the likely outcome of this whole thing is a tower moment, and I wonder who that's going to be for. So there we go. So now we'll jump on to uh, Harry. So that's been the big deal. I mean, he's had to separate himself from the, um, uh, you know, the money of the royal family, which you got to give the guy credit. You know, none of his immediate um, uh, family has done that. His uncle uh, Edward, um, the youngest of uh, the Queen's sons, has tried throughout the years different ventures, uh, money-making situations, but he still is backed up by the crown, so he doesn't have to worry. But uh, Harry, yeah, he's broken free, another country, making a life somewhere else, and like him or not, Okay, you have to give a guy credit for that. You do, you know. So let's take six cards for Harry and his money-making uh, schemes. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And when I say schemes, I don't say that in a, in a derogative way. Just, uh, you know, the adventures, the, the, the things he has to do to finance his family and hopefully some good deeds. Signifier card, Harry and the money and the future. Well, eight of wands. Of course, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. These wands are very fruitful. They're coming down at the same time, and they look uh, a little threatening to this person in the middle here. So uh, this is the uh, signifier card for this reading about Harry and the money. And it looks like there's lots of... These are fruitful. These could be lots of opportunities. And the question could be knowing which ones to pluck out of the sky and work on, which ones to let land and pick up later. So signifier card, Harry and money making. And look, this woman seems to be in charge. Is that Megan? So the uh, challenge to that then is this ace of swords. The challenge to this money making is truth, justice, rules, law. And uh, of course it is. So we have to, he has to find a way to um, uh, finance his family, finance his life, and keeping in mind uh, this uh, truth, justice, rules, and law. That's the challenge to getting this done. In the base of this reading, we have the Ace of Cups. Cups are emotion. And the Ace of Cups is just a huge offer of emotion. And let's face it, that's what underpins all of this. This has got to be one of the most heartfelt, emotional um, uh, situations uh, that this uh, family will ever face. 
And uh, so I think they're pretty well through it now. I think they found their footing. And uh, so the underpinning of this is all the emotion that this stirs up, good and bad. The past of this reading for Harry and the money. The three of swords, and this is heartbreak. Swords of truth, justice, rules, and law. Uh, typically, this, these, this card is represented by three swords going through a heart. But this tells you that there's um, deep-seated <coughs> emotional uh, damage in the past. In the sky of this reading with the Seven of Wands, this is hopeful because this uh, Seven of Wands is fighting off all these issues. So where you have these issues coming down over here, fruitful being presented, now you have up in the sky knowing which ones to fend off and, uh, and be successful at that. And then the final outcome, Harry and the Money, is the Chariot. Things coming on fast. So it looks like perhaps this is going to be the time when that spigot gets turned on and maybe that life starts to uh, uh, seed. So Harry and the money is represented by the Eight of Wands. Lots of actions coming down at the same time, knowing which ones to pluck out of the air, which ones to let fall and pick up later. And there seems to be a woman in charge of that. And it's challenged by this truth, justice, and rules and laws with this great big ace of swords. The underpinning, all this emotional capacity that this has with this Ace of Cups, equally as valuable as the truth, justice, rules, and law, are all these uh, uh, emotions and, and, uh, and heart-rendering situations. The uh, past of this, with this Three of Swords, is all the heartbreak regarding the truth, justice, rules, and law that it took to get here. But in the sky of this, we have the Seven of Wands really taking some plans to fend off those things that aren't useful right now and just bring forward the ones that are. And then the final outcome for this for Harry and the money making is the chariot, which means says to me that things are about to start. The spigot is about to get turned on. And then the final question for all of this is going to be England without Boris. England without Boris. And uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, and let's hope that England untangles itself from Boris uh, in a much better way than the United States is trying to untangle itself, I guess, uh, from Trump. Um, it doesn't seem like that's happening very, uh, anyone's trying very hard to untangle itself, but there you go. So England without Boris, England without Boris. Let's get another six cards for that. Okay, one, two, Three, four, five, and six. England without Boris. Could be a good thing, don't you think? England without a signifier card. Is two of coins finding a balance. Perfect. All right. Finding the value and where to, um, uh, how to keep it uh, up in the air. How to keep that government uh, on an even keel. Uh, which will probably be easier, perhaps, without him there. The challenge to that, though, is uh, this Eight of Swords, truth, justice, rules, law, feeling, trap. But the fact is, with this Eight of Swords, this maiden was never trapped. She can slip out of those binds and find her way through. So the challenge to getting that balance is getting, find your way around that truth, justice, rules, and law, not in a bad way, but maneuvering all of those uh, regulations and rules and things that must happen uh, to get that thing done. The basis of this reading is the Seven of Swords, and the Seven of Swords, sadly, it serves truth, justice, rules, and law, but the Seven of Swords is betrayal, theft and betrayal. And this has been the basis of this whole thing. So has that been um, Boris's um, base, really, his, uh, where he starts from, theft and betrayal? Uh, in the uh, past of this, this is very interesting. I love when the cards repeat. We've got this Eight of Swords. Again, all of these issues coming down, and this is in the past. So I'm not sure. So we've got lots of issues happening and there are things that have to be dealt with in the past. So is this going to be some leftover issues that still need to be dealt with? In the sky of this reading, we have this page of wands, again, a repeat card from this uh, particular session. And uh, wands are plans, motions forward, weak plans. So in the sky, this is not a strong harbinger of what's going to happen, but it's a, a message that this is what we have to deal with, and uh, you tell me what you're going to do with it. That's what the page is saying to the royal court. And, and not literally the royal court, but to the authorities uh, in charge of whatever he's uh, bringing this message forward to. And then the final outcome for this, the knight of coins. Coins are value, worth. This knight is going to fight for that value. This is England, okay? England is going to fight 
to uh, make itself right. So it started over again, England without Boris, finding a balance, okay, of that value, of that worth, uh, challenged by knowing how to slip through the binds of all those regulations and rules and truths, um, and in a good way, not in a bad way. And in the uh, basis of this, the Seven of Swords, theft and betrayal, that's what's been dealt with for quite some time here. In the past of this, all of these issues are about to land from the past. They're about to land. They're going to have to be dealt with. And in the sky of this, with this page of wands, is a very weak um, messenger of a plan to come forward. But then the likely outcome is that England is going to fight for their value. And when you fight for your value, you typically uh, come out better than when you started. So that's what I've got for those three uh, subjects today. Well, that's our three topics today. I hope you liked them. Tell me what you think in the comments because I read all of that and I try to respond to you. And uh, thanks a lot. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so these are, again, some amazing cards. The Touchstone Tarot by Cat Black, who's an Australian artist. She lives in on the western, uh, southwestern, I think, part of Australia. But the box is so great. You really feel like you got something worthwhile in that. The instruction booklet is um, is very good, as a matter of fact. It's not in color, but it's got some really good uh, ideas for divination. Tells you a little bit about the artist, so that's handy. And then the cards. I mean, look how beautiful they are. Even just the back is gilding. You can feel that gilding right there. But the front, these cards are not hard to decipher, but they really focus in on the face. Of You'll notice all of these are, you know, from the bust up, from the waist almost up. So they really make you identify with the face when you're trying to make the interpretation. Cat Black is amazing. Um, I don't know how uh, she came up with this, but she came with some beautiful, beautiful artwork. And all digital. So there's not a painting somewhere that looks like this. Of course, these are made from actual uh, paintings. And, you know, I, I do this so that everybody can look at these cards and maybe you don't get to see uh, kind of different kind of cards. And, um, and this gives you that opportunity. I always wanted to see what the tarot readers were using, what the cards looked like when I was uh, only just uh, being a viewer. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come. So ciao for now. make a big difference. Thank you.